Hello and welcome to Intro to Digital Sculpting 2. My name is Pierre and I'm a character artist. For many years I've had the pleasure of studying and creating digital sculpting coursework. If you enjoy CG art, game art, or 3D print, digital sculpting is a fun and interactive path into the world of polygons. Sculptures is the best place to develop your sculpting skills. In this course, we dive a bit deeper covering a simple breakdown of dynamic tessellation, tooltips, and sculpting techniques. Much of the fundamental information covered will apply to any additional sculpting application you like. This course does assume you've watched Intro to Digital Sculpting with Sculptures or already have some experience with 3D sculpting. So don't delay and let's play with digital clay here in this course. On the surface. Understanding the surface of your sculpt and how detail is generated will make you a much more efficient sculptor. This here is a polygon. It has a minimum of three vertices, three edges, and one face. You stitch a bunch of these together and you'll have some geometry. Sculpting often requires millions of polygons, so typically we divide our geo many times uniformly. Sculptress uses dynamic tessellation in order to automatically divide your model, adding detail where you want as your brush crosses the surface. This technology is now available inside of ZBrush, Blender, and 3D Cult sculpting options. You can view this inside of Sculptress by turning on your wireframe, then stroking across your model. Next is detail. Detail is controlled by three elements in Sculptress. First is tiny tools. When we want to detail something, we often end up using smaller or finer tools. Inside Sculptress, the smaller your brush, the more polygon slash detail is generated. With wireframe enabled, make several strokes making your brush smaller and smaller. And what you'll see as your brush gets smaller, the more detail or more polygons are added to your stroke. The second element is getting close. Often detailing something means getting very close to it. The closer we get to our model, the more polygons slash detail is generated. You can view this with wireframe enabled Stroke your model, zoom, and repeat without changing your brush size. You'll notice that more polygons or detail is generated the closer you are to the surface. The final part of controlling detail is the detail slider, located upon your viewport and within your spacebar float menu. Raising or lowering this slider will increase or decrease the amount of polygons slash detail is generated. You could honestly continue to sculpt beautiful pieces never knowing these things. However, I believe understanding what is happening on the surface is important in order to gain more control over your tools. Project Intro We will generally follow this bearded Oni design for our sculpt. Oni, a monstrous horned humanoid found in countless Japanese stories and myths. They're generally depicted as roguish villains and enemies of mankind. Before starting a project, it's best to visually break the subject down into separate pieces. In this Afro Samurai scope, you can see the individual sculpted parts as portions are hidden. And if you want to take things even further, you can plan for non-symmetrical areas of your scope to tweak later in the process. The same goes for posing a character. On the left is the initial sculpt, and on the right is the posed version. Tools and Tips Soon we will head into battle to sculpt our subject, so let's gear up with some tool tips to help us along the way. With the Reduce Selected button, sculptors will automatically reduce polys of unmasked areas while attempting to maintain form in the process. Reduce polys manually with the reduce brush. Reducing polys is necessary to remove any high poly details 
and to manage your poly count. Repeated strokes in the area will add to this effect. The reduce brush has an alt mode. Holding the alt key will add polys or detail to your surface. This can be used to pre-poly an area for further detailing later. Sculptures has the ability to recover a project upon crashing. Upon relaunching the program, the sculpt will be restored. In order to make sure you have this feature turned on, open the options menu and right up top is the recover from crashes option. Make sure this is activated and that's it. Use export to save your sculpt as an OBJ file. This allows you to open your sculpts and other programs for editing and saving in other 3D formats such as STL for 3D printing. Hold the H key while clicking to hide separate parts of your model. Press both Ctrl and H keys together to unhide everything. You can isolate parts of your model by clicking both H and Shift keys while clicking to isolate. Hide the rectangular sections by holding the H key and next click and drag across your model and release. Isolate rectangular sections by holding both H and Shift keys while dragging across your model and release. Mask your entire model. Now click to select. Press both Ctrl and C keys to copy and now paste the copy by pressing both Ctrl and V keys. And lastly one more click to place it into your scene where you want. Delete parts by unmasking a section of your model then press the delete key to remove. Mirror is located within the Rotate Tool options. Clicking it while snapped to the front view will produce a weird viewing error, but mirroring from any other angle works just fine. You can also mirror portions of your model with the use of masking. Disabling the XYZ option on your Skill Tool allows you to squash and stretch your model. It's affected by your camera angle and the direction you move your cursor. Pressing the P key will toggle the visibility of your pivot point on and off. Holding the P key and clicking will reposition your pivot point. This is the center point or anchor of your rotate and scale tool while in global mode. Activating airbrush mode creates a consistent buildup effect. It's most noticeable with the non-clay draw brush, while the clay stroke offers tighter edges with airbrush on. Alphas are black and white images used for texturing. To apply an alpha to your draw brush, click the brush box here. Next, press new. Now select the black and white image to open inside Sculptress. Now click to select. You need to enable the alpha here in your spacebar float menu or underneath your alpha preview up top. Now your brush has an alpha applied to it and can be seen on your strokes. Every tool tip isn't necessary for our project but you will have them for future reference. We will reuse many of the same brushes and methods throughout the course and at the beginning of each clip I will highlight a few of these focus areas to note. Reference and Overview PureRef is a free piece of software that you can drag and drop as well as copy and paste your reference images into. But most importantly, you can activate Stay on Top mode allowing you to see your reference while sculpting. The basics are thus, click and drag to move pics. Next hold Ctrl and Alt keys while click and dragging to scale. Next middle mouse button click and drag to pan around. The mouse scroll wheel will zoom in and out. As well as right clicking will bring up your main menu. I highlighted a few of the most used options here. A brief overview of the sculpting process. First we select our base form 
In this case, we're using a plane. Next, we block out the large shapes, keeping things loose and filling things out. Next, still blocking out shapes and form, we move into the secondary shapes, the shapes within our initial shapes. Additional geometry and tweaks using the move brush are necessary to guide our sculpt in the direction you want. Lastly are the details. Detailing is a lot of fun but needs to be handled with care as to maintain balance between too little and too much detail. Base shapes. Some of the key focus areas are working in parts, using a grab brush, and working from various angles. Now if you right click in the pre ref document and go up to mode and highlight and make sure always on top is checked that will make sure that pure ref stays open on top of our sculptures document here. So now let's start to generate shapes and sculpt them generate our base shapes starting with the head I'm using a large grab brush just to block out the kind of outline of a head. I'm kind of flattening the sides here and I'm kind of establishing a cheek and a forehead and just pushing and pulling making sure not to dive into sculpting brushes yet as we need to get the big shapes established and even some of the smaller ones can be achieved with the move brush here and just push that forward to make a chin all right now from this profile view i'm just kind of pulling back on this clay to form a mouth and keep in mind, at this point, I'm not really paying too much attention to the reference. I'm just trying to establish some of the base anatomy for this character head, which is the open mouth and some of the big areas such as eyes, his forehead, big shapes. So I'm starting to even tweak the eye area here using this move brush. And the more you use this brush, the better you'll get at it and better you'll be able to establish shapes uh, faster without the use of sculpting brushes. Another good reason for sticking with the move brush for as far as you can is because it forces you to work on some of those fundamental things such as working the big shapes first as well as continuously working around your model. When you use the move brush, you always have to change your camera angle in order to pull the clay in the direction you want so definitely practice that and it's truly efficient um, you might be able to sculpt pretty fast with the sculpting brushes but if you stick with the move brush you'll you'll see some definite uh, improvement in pacing And don't forget to have fun. Definitely focus on what your goal is here. And don't focus on uh, being perfect just yet. There's a lot of room for tweaking and, and kind of narrowing things closer to what we want. Okay checking from this lower angle here just checking shapes the curvature of his forehead and there's no real bad angles to look at your model from while working at it, it helps make sure that things look good from various angles which is the real goal of your sculpt it's not to just look great from that one angle but hopefully you know, 360 all the way around, if not most of your model. I'm just going to continue to shape that chin there. 
Just viewing it from a few different angles here. Cheek as well. Okay. Just getting things already. I think we're just about ready to add a new sphere here. We're going to click Add Object. And right in the center of the face, I just click to add a single sphere to the scene. And now I'm just scaling it down with the scale tool. And I'm just seeing how thing looks from the side view to pull it out of his mouth a bit there. I'm going to scale it down a bit more. And the idea here is I'm going to use this to make the tusk that's kind of coming out of his mouth in our concept. So I'm just using the grab brush to slowly pull out the ends of the sphere to form that tusk. So in several pulls, I can form that from this view. Let's go ahead and grab the inflate brush. I'm just gonna slightly click in the areas I want to puff out some. And just continue to edit this from various angles. And I'm just going to place it again. Make sure I get it kind of tucked up into his mouth. You can always go back to the head and use that move brush to kind of shape the, the mouth around the tusk. So a slightly smaller move brush. I'm doing just that. Okay. And just to continue to nudge until you're just about happy with just a base shape for this head piece here. You can always come back and push it further, which is the idea here. Let's go ahead and add another sphere. I'm going to add object. And this time we're going to add it to the sides to generate two spheres. I'm just scaling them down using the scale tool. And now with my grab brush, just pulling on the tip with a medium to small brush to kind of form what will be ears for our Oni here. Just trying to get a bit of a curvature to them from this profile view. And so a little bit more tweak into the profile of that ear. And that should be just about good for a basic shape. So now I'm just moving it into position. Ear should be about there. And let's go ahead and Actually, let's go back to the ears, and I want to actually rotate them a bit. So using the rotate tool, just click the base there, and I'm rotate it. That looks good. Should do for now. Let's go ahead and move on here. Let's go ahead and click to add another sphere. I'm going to add object, and I'm going to add two more spheres. Once again, scaling them down. Zoom in a bit. And now with the grab brush, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull on these. And I actually performed a smooth on it. And this is going to be horns, little tiny horns sitting up front here and actually I'm going to scale them up a bit I've got to actually change those to bigger horns he actually has several little horns and spikes coming out of his head okay that's a rough shape of those And just using that grab brush, tweak the shape. And looking at it from the profile view here, just gonna go ahead and 
tweak it with the grab brush. Just trying to get it to look a bit straighter. Or, let's see. Just playing with the position. Okay. Spending probably more time on that than I need it now. But do it now. Save time later. So that's a decent horn. Let's go ahead and move on. It's back to the head here. So playing with that grab brush. Just trying to put in some more shapes. And just do some little noodling. We've gotten in most of the big shapes now. I'm just tweaking things, just trying to get to look more like a head. Stylized and exaggerated, but but a head. With a large gaping mouth. Okay, so now to these ears here. Just gonna go ahead and tweak the shape a bit here. Now I can start to look at the relationship of these pieces to each other in respect to the reference and just make the necessary tweaks. Those tusks needed to come out a bit more and also thicken up. And I'm just making them look a bit more like a kind of like a bull's horn, kind of cartoonish bull horn. Okay. I'm going to use a pinch brush right at that tip there. Every once in a while, I'll hop out of grab brush to get some things done. Okay, so just looking around. Figuring out where to go next. Let's go ahead and add another sphere. Two spheres to be exact. Scale them down, down. And now with the move brush, I'm going to pull on them. I'm going to scale them down a bit more. And now from the side view, I'm just kind of putting them in place. And from the front view, putting them in place. It's the fastest way to position stuff. And now using the move brush, just get a bit of a curve from this profile view. And I'm stretching them. And these are gonna be like the two large teeth on either side of his mouth here. Okay. Now I'm just using a bit of an inflate brush at the base to kind of expand it and enhance the taper at the end of the tooth. And I'm just playing around with a bit of a curve from this angle. I'm not sure if that makes sense or if I keep it. Just wanted to try it out. Okay, back to the side profile view. And looks fine. I think I'm going to go back to the head and actually tweak the mouth a bit to connect with the bony parts here. It's all figuring things out. And my goal here is to, as I said before, just generally follow the concept. And I use the H key to hide that tusk. Control H to unhide everything. All right, so now I'm just using the draw brush. Finally started to break into a little bit of sculpting and just carve out the cavity of that mouth a bit. All right, let's go ahead and add another sphere to our scene. 
add object clicking in the center this time for a single sphere I'm gonna move this here to the back of the head and now I'm gonna use the grab brush to kind of shape it into his hair kind of has a balding head up top with the hair running along the sides and I may use this to also do his beard as well or we could do another sphere let's see how this goes here I'm just gonna try it out I'm just stretching that geometry with the grab brush up front to start to form a beard okay and once you kind of understand the tools with size sculpting you can focus more on the design aspects of translating things from 2d to 3d as we are here I'm pulling on the ends of these the sphere here kind of form kind of like peaks or clumps of hair not fully decided on what direction to take with that just some placeholder placeholder stuff there I think I'll pull out another here another here and at this point I'm just reminding myself not to put too much too much emphasis on anything because I will make several changes as we go forward okay just working on that shape These spikes kind of have like an anime hairstyle idea in my mind with the these spikes here and I'm just kind of tucking it into the underside of his chin here I don't anticipate the underside being seen much or showing it off so just tuck away okay let's continue to work on this here I don't tend on the back of the head being seen much but I would like it to look fairly decent so I don't want to underdo it either and now I'm just kind of playing with the angle and direction of this hair it's very important for you know stylized piece that doesn't have a ton of geometry even now at this date to kind of get a idea of the flow of some of this geometry or clay if you will probably best to consider it clay and now I'm just noodling away on that hair just about ready to call it for the base shapes here back to the head slash face just continue to make those tweaks I mean it's not done till till we're done so continue to work on it and then step by step we can push this guy closer and closer to that reference piece and if you can get here in this amount of time that's great if not, that's also fine. These things take practice, it takes time. You'll get there. So now I'm just working on this chin here and this interaction with that beard hair or beard, beard geo. Just working on that shape. I'm starting to like how the base is turning out. Let's zoom in here. See what we got. 
All right, that concludes this clip. Remember that the key focuses are to work in parts in order to keep things efficient while working. Also to use the grab brush as well as work from various angles while sculpting. In the next clip, we're going to focus on secondary shapes of our bearded Oni. See you there. Secondary shapes. Some of the key focuses in this clip are a smooth brush, grab brush, working from angles, and the crease brush. Okay, in this clip we really dive into having some fun. I'm going to start off by adding a set of spheres to our scene here and scaling them down. I'm just going to place them into his eye sockets here. And we're going to kind of give him some eyeballs at least for the time being. This is a common technique sculptors and modelers use where they place a sphere into the eye socket and sculpt or form the head or skull or skin around the sphere in order to form the area around the eye. We'll see that in just a moment. I just wanted to pull out his lips here. You can see a bit of his lips underneath his nose which we'll also work on. I just wanted to pull out that area before going further. I'm just placing some place mark crease brush. I'm just kind of sketching in the design. I may completely obliterate this later, but I'm just trying to it's a fresh approach to it here. Not loving it. I'll probably try something else. Probably try a little bit more care. Well, I'll just change the design a bit. And from this lower angle here, continue to tweaking important areas. Getting the curvature of that brow. And next, back, I'm just going to move the eyeball a bit. And I'm just trying to figure out how I want to approach the eye socket area. I just want to take it to the next level. Let's go ahead and add a bit more form to his nose here. And once again, back with that grab brush, just pulling things out. Now I'm using the draw brush, the clay draw brush for a moment to sculpt out that nose, build the volume for those nostrils there. And if you want, you can just go ahead and use that move brush, pull that out. And and just like everything else, I'm just checking it from all sorts of angles to help us establish the shapes we're looking for here. Okay. And a lot of times you kind of have to figure these things out because it is part of translating 2D to 3D. So, your first interpretation might not be the best, and that's common, so expect that to happen. Now I'm just carving out the nostrils from the underside. And sculpting out that little indention right underneath the nose. I forget what that's called. I'm going to look it up in a bit. Just go ahead and pull out that edge of that nostril. 
just gonna tweak my settings I'm always tweaking my settings and now I'm going to use a mask brush just to mask off the lip area here part of the cheek and the underside I want to edit the nose but I don't want to affect these areas so I'm just masking that off and now with a medium size grab brush I'm pulling out and down and that mask we drew is keeping those areas from being affected even now as we continue to tweak the nose here just looking at my reference and the general shape from our main view here figure out things from the profile view as well it's a good idea not to spend too much time in any particular angle or view let's say the front view as when it's time to change things and look from a different angle you might have a lot of work to fix so I like to kind of hop around and look around from various angles for that reason as well back to these lips here I'm just using the flatten brush to kind of kind of flatten the area of the lip and I don't necessarily want them flattened but I want it a flatter area than what we had there so I don't want it to be super hard like it was I'm just hitting it with a bit of smooth okay starting to see things shape up and we keep working on it we'll get it even closer all right let's go ahead and mask off everything and unmask the face by clicking and I still have those front tusk teeth masked or hidden Sometimes it's best to just leave a piece hidden for a while so you can sculpt other areas. So glad when I found out that sculptors could do that. Definitely a game changer in, in efficiency. So now I'm just continuing to play with that nose. It's a fairly large landmark in the design, so it should get a good amount of time and kind of figuring out the size and placement and overall shape here I'm just connecting that forehead to his nose here because it's kind of how it looks in the reference okay and now I'm just using the crease brush here just kind of figure out some of these these lines here and now with the move brush just messing with the brow trying to give them more of a angled menacing look here to that brow using the draw brush in clay mode just building up that ridge even more It's always good. If you can find a way to add volume, go ahead and do that. I have to go as far as to say eight times out of ten, it'll make your sculpt look better. Find a way to add some volume that doesn't hurt the design. And I'm just using the crease brush while holding Alt to create these ridges. Another nice little trick. It's become a a main part of my sculpting workflow. Is this ridge building technique with a crease brush? And once again, that's just crease brush while holding the Alt key to do that. Okay, I'm 
just looking at the nose here just figure out where these eye creases should be looking at the reference it's like one big bag right underneath his eye that kind of swoops in to the nose so we'll try to build that and just hopping all the way around seeing what needs some tweaking and my only goal is not to get into any any serious detailing as long as we can avoid that while pushing this closer to the reference we're on track so once again working on the mouth here trying to add more of a ridge to what would be his lips trying to add a bit of definition there okay just actually crashed just then all right but we are back and ready to rock sculptures pulled up my file because I had the recover from crash activated so now I'm using that crease brush to kind of run along the underside of that chin there establish the lip and I just pull down the hair a bit just to allow me to see more of the lip there and I'm just trying to be not too hard too light with this crease uh, it's a bit harsh now but I can always uh, run a smooth brush over it like this and I don't have to smooth every area but maybe a few spots maybe a transition into a smoother line so just like I said with the smooth brush I'll undo that just smooth out that crease okay Let's unhide everything now with a medium sized move brush I'm just going to pull out the mouth a bit and I'm going to pull back this tooth there I'm going to pull out the mouth a bit just trying to wiggle them from both ends so that they kind of meet alright just pulling out that area a bit as it should be a bit of a bulge these teeth are enormous so let's go ahead and do that and from this angle we can see how that looks real easily and we can also tweak the shape and direction of that tooth real easily from that angle so once again always moving around tweaking from every which angle I just use the pinch brush at the top of that tooth there it's a little pinch technique I'm gonna actually try it from the top here all right it's not bad let's go ahead and check it from other angles hmm them out see what else we need to tweak just pulling out the edges of his mouth here and tweaking the forehead a bit and back to the brow and the just face area in general And now back with the crease brush, I went ahead and decided to carve in another crease. Just some of the foundation detail of what will be actual detail later. Just hints at detail at this point. But 
also being sure being careful not to fall into detail and too early and one of the main reasons you don't want to fall into detail and too early because it can be difficult to tweak large areas once you've detailed areas so one step at a time just went ahead and hit the hair and beard so I can kind of continue to form this chin here now this will be behind hair but it's good to just figure it out let's pull this down pull it forward a bit I'm telling you the the grab brush is where you want to be spending a lot of your time okay now that chin's looking way better because I give it a bit of value back to these tusks here I'm gonna kind of tweak this shape I'm gonna hide that tooth and pull this down I'm looking at the reference here I decide if I want to do how it is in the picture or if I want to try something a little different because like I said before sometimes it just comes down to translating it from 2d to 3d things don't work in a one-to-one -one translation so at times that is your job to figure out and I'm just hitting this with a bit of smooth that helps us get a nice smooth contour on our tusk here all right let's go ahead and push this up some because you don't really see it the tusk that's inside of his mouth but we still have a few more parts to add some more teeth to really get a good good perspective on how this push this closer to our reference and I'm just taking my time tweaking the placement and shape even from this profile view here of these tusks let's go ahead and give a bit of attention to the ears all right from see this angle here I'm just gonna use the rotate tool okay now with the grab brush just redirect the shape of that and I'm adding a bit of uh, indention in there. And I'm using a move brush. Truthfully, this would be something to use a sculpting brush for. Okay, it's coming along. That's a better looking ear. And now with the crease brush, I'm just going to kind of gloss in some hint of detail. Can't really see his ears in the in the picture because they're kind of covered by the smoke. So kind of freestyling that. Back onto the head, I'm noticing things are very dry from this angle. It's like no form at all. So just using the crease brush to draw in uh, some of the some of the forms we can consider keeping I'm just adding some crow's feet that's what they call the the wrinkles in the corner of the eyes all right let's go ahead and add another sphere 
right to the center of our scene here. Scale it down. And just kind of embed it right in the center of his forehead. And this is going to be the eye in his head. I'm going to take this moment to go ahead and use the grab brush to kind of reshape his forehead. I'm just pushing it forward. And I have a specific shape in mind for the forehead. Something a bit more boxy. Makes it look some more stylized. And the placement of the eye is very important to that shape. So we'll be tweaking both of these back and forth till I kind of get it in the area. All right. So now with the crease brush, I'm just drawing the guess placeholders for what would be the eyelids so I just had to undo that thought this shape needed a bit more tweaking wasn't boxy enough that's pretty boxy there we go that's better You definitely want to kind of hammer that shape in before sculpting too much. And you can make these kind of edits having done some crease brush, but you likely have to come and redo, redo some of the sculpting. So I'm just pretty much trying to carve out an opening for the eye. Now I'm using the draw brush and the crease brush, switching between the two trying to add some folding skin around the eye you give the appearance of a eyelid or eyelids I should say and I should probably have some reference of an actual eye but this isn't this wasn't really look like an actual eye because there's no corner kind of making it symmetrical on both ends. It's no tear duct, I should say. And I decided to go ahead and just carve in the kind of like the iris, I think you call it. See how it looks. Feeling like we can always smooth it out. Okay. Just went ahead and hit the eyeball so I can go ahead and use the draw brush holding Alt to just carve out a bit of this clay here. It's kind of popping through the eyeball. So I'm going to go ahead and carve this out okay still need a bit more tweaking just use the crease brush here just to reveal a bit more of the eye on these edges here and now I'm using alt to kind of create a raised edge similar to your eyes. Eyes have kind of a sharp edge right at the tip of your eyelashes. Like a like a window seal. Okay. Like how that's looking so far. Let's continue to make some tweaks here. I'm gonna kind of rotate the eye so I'm going to use the rotate tool having hidden most of the head here. Bring everything back. That's how it looks. Use some grab brush and just continue to tweak. Okay. I think we're 
just about done with tweaks for this clip. Just run around, tweaking here and there, such as the nose and whatnot. Still more to go. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. Okay, that does conclude this clip. Do remember the key focuses. When in doubt, smooth brush it out and never leave home without your grab brush. Always work at various angles at all times and decrease is to detail. In the next clip, we'll continue to make tweaks and edits as well as add additional pieces and use brush pressure. See you there. pieces and pressure. The key focus of this clip are the grab, draw, and smooth brushes, working from angles, working with parts, as well as pin pressure. Now we got a decent amount of the model done, just to hop into options and play with the FOV setting. I'll change the way our model looks in the viewport. I chose a setting of 30. You usually want to use something around that or a bit higher. Okay, let's go ahead and get to some sculpting here. Alright, first we're going to start off by making some tweaks as usual. It's a common, common method in sculpting. And you might have noticed already that I've went ahead and hidden pure ref. Have it off to the side now. And I'll just occasionally glance over. And I'm working on each section to take notes and translate it to the model. Okay. So now from this top down view, I'm just kind of working on the eye and face area. Just tweaking the overall shapes and direction of some of the some of the edges we got here. Goes for the nose as well. His mouth. And you can, believe me, tweak almost indefinitely. Like you can spend forever making these little nudges till you feel everything's perfect. And do so. 3D sculpting and modeling can be a time consuming process at times. So it might as well be happy with what you're working on. So take that time if you have it. Get more out of the process for yourself at least. Just tweaking the cheeks and brows and nose. Just trying to make things broader and get the flow of some of the shapes from our reference here. And over time, these little tweaks can make a huge difference. It may not feel like you're doing much. A little nudge here and there, you do that couple hundred times you'll have a completely different piece I went to the eye area here unmasked it and I'm unmasking a portion of the head I want to change the position of this a bit and with my grab brush set fairly large and fairly strong I'm just gonna pull it down a bit just changing the position and the shape a bit And now I'm just going to go ahead and smooth out some of that edging there that was created. Alright, so I'm in a little too close there. And just taking a look. What areas I want to translate. I'm just using smooth to smooth out those details in the forehead. And now with a medium to small brush, I'm working on these large tusk like teeth sticking straight up and I'm just playing with the direction and shape of them I'm trying to see if I can create any more interest 
and make sure that I have the placement exactly how I like it. Just use pinch to kind of slim it down a bit. Okay. And some grab brush to just slightly tweak its shape. And these are the kind of things you want to do before proceeding to the detailing phase. You want to make sure things are in the right position and that you're happy with them. Now right there I just did a copy and paste. That's with the control C to copy and then control V to paste. And I'm just using the rotate tool to rotate them. And the move brush to change the shape. Okay. And now I'm using a reduce brush just to reduce the polys here, just to shorten it up. And I'm going to continue to reduce a bit more and smooth. And I'm just completely reshaping this. And now with my move brush, I'm going to go ahead and continue to edit the shape. and pull and now with the flatten brush I'm just running around the edges here just flatten it out if you haven't guessed this is going to be a tooth so I just continue to play with this here I think we just about got a decent shape let's go ahead and scale it or squash it I should say now turn off XYZ that allows you to do the stretch and squashing effect now let's take this and get it into position so we can tweak it further alright now we got it down here in his mouth let's continue to get it in exact position just use the H key to hide that large tooth. Now with the move brush, let's continue to make those edits to the tooth. Kind of flatten it out, raising it up. I'm just kind of going for a kind of a squarish peg, kind of stylized tooth. Is the idea. And it's not going to have a whole lot of visibility, but just enough to fill up his mouth once we kind of duplicate these in just a bit. Just continuing to get that shape there. Looks pretty good. So now we got those placed. I'm just going to go ahead and control copy and paste another set of teeth. And another set and now I'm just going to use the grab brush to move those into place and if I've happened to call it move brush just know that I'm referring to the grab brush I use the brush as well and sometimes I just say move brush so, so now with the grab brush still just tweaking tweaking these teeth and if you want at this point in time it wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and make the teeth look a little different from one another but we can always wait till later see if you want to do that and a little smooth around the base of the tooth I'm gonna do the same for this kind of gives a little bit more of an interest to the shape and I'm letting the smoothing kind of give each tooth its own originality just randomly moving it around just trying to get some different planes on the tooth okay let's go ahead and select these two we're gonna go ahead and copy control C control V to paste Okay, now these are pasted in here even though we want the tops to be 
rotate it like so. So we won't have to necessarily redo that work we did. And we can just reuse most of what we've already done here. Okay, I tried to hit the mirror. I was hoping that would flip the teeth, but uh, there we go. That worked. And if we flip the model, was that just a bug? But that seemed to work. So now I'm just smoothing out the tops here. Just a bit. Reshaping with the grab brush. Hiding that tooth again. And now just getting these right into place. Uh, next from this angle, I'm going to hide some parts here so we can get right underneath it so we can use the rotate tool. Just like that. And I'm going to do the same to each tooth down here individually. Just trying to get them to face the right way. And just move them in place. And hopefully at this point you can truly see the power of working in pieces as opposed to sculpting something like this out of one piece of geometry while possible and it can be sort of intuitive it's very time consuming it can get difficult very fast unless you're keeping it real loose you know it depends on your style if you like it by all means uh, go that route what's most important here is your experience and what what you're comfortable with while you're working okay I'm just adding a bit more volume to that I guess tooth lip and gum line area using a crease brush to add a crease in there now hitting a couple of teeth so I can build up some gums around the base of these teeth. I think I'll leave it out of the top teeth. Okay, let's go ahead and see what's next here. Next we're going to do a bit of drawing on the details on his forehead. Now these dots here for strength and size activate the tablet pressure. So just click in this for strength. Now if I press harder on my tablet, I will get a deeper stroke. So and light pressure will get light strokes. Boosting up the placement on the slider will enhance that effect. So now I'm just going to uncheck that. I'm just going to build up the surface a little bit using the draw brush and now I'm just going to make this a bit stronger and just kind of sculpt in some kind of swirls because that's what's going on in his head here so I decided to just kind of add some dots instead I'm going to be Plant with quite a few tools here in the making of this area. Kind of a detailed focus area. So, so now I'm back with the crease brush. I have the tablet pressure turned on for the strength. And now I'm just going to draw these swirls with a smallish brush all throughout his forehead all while trying to follow some type of a connective pattern here and typically for these things you want to kind of plan them out and I've actually sculpted this quite a few times so I'm kind of have a, a loose understanding of how to approach the technique I mean, in some ways I am kind of winging it but I have some ideas on how to create these swirls from any type of position I kind of sculpt myself into so just kind of filling it out occasionally I'll ghost in 
a direction I want to go. That's when you practice making a line without actually doing it. You just kind of like hover over your model and do a practice stroke. It could be definitely useful for this, this kind of work here. And once again, whatever you make is not final. You're always able to smooth out, obliterate, or reconstruct an area as I'll definitely be doing with these these little swirls here. And I'm just trying to figure out where to go with this particular one here. Just making a few undos there. And I actually try to do a few undos uh, in the course here. But it's very natural, especially with uh, designs, especially at this state when you're figuring stuff out. And this is definitely a matter of translating from 2D to 3D. Many undos will be had. And that's fine. It's just part of the path of creating something that you ultimately uh, feel is, is a better piece of work. So just continue to fill things out. And if I ever said it before, if you deviate in any way, um, that's totally cool. Uh, make your demon head or whatever you choose to scoop, sculpt any way you want. Just continue to use that crease brush to just at least quickly stroke in some of these creases. Some of these most important areas looking off the reference I have off to the side here. And there's a few areas I'm definitely deviating from my own concept. And I'm restroking the lines here in the face. And just slightly changing the direction a bit. In a lot of ways, I want this to look as best as I can from the front view. And I want to kind of maintain that that energy from, from uh, all other angles. So now, using that crease to kind of curve the little swirl, putting his nose. And my idea was that this was to be a mask for the most part, one of, one of those Oni masks. And over time it got kind of a little elaborate, so not decided if he's fully just a mask or if it's just a head, but I'll leave that up for you to interpret. And I'm just working around the nose here. Right now I'm holding alt with the crease brush to build up that edge right along the lip here. And now with the pinch brush, I'm running around that same edge to make it even tighter. And that pretty much is the basis for hard surface sculpting and sculptress. Just raise edges with the crease brush and pinch edges. Right now I'm using the flat brush with a very faint low strength setting to kind of flatten the swirls we did on the forehead. To just remove some of the volume from them. And now I'm adding some kind of support knots to kind of fill out the design a bit as it transitions to the back of the head. as well as just trying to figure out how my previous swirls are going to fit into that. Once again, just figuring it out. So I always come back and tweak even at this state. Okay. I think we 
Got it pretty much wrapped. Likely no more new swirls going forward. At best, we'll probably improve some of these as far as their directions and and shapes and sizes. But I do have plans to come in and add a bit more edging. I want this to look a little bit more solid, a bit more creasy, if that makes any sense. Okay, just nudging away here. And a little some little details in between these sections here. Just like so. Alright. A little flatten brush. Zoom out, see what we have. Okay. I think he's looking better. Just gonna work on the horn here. This copied and pasted it in. And he has a few more tinier horns in the front of his head here. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and scale that down with the scale tool. And turned off XYZ. And next, just zooming in a bit here. And I'm just using the flatten brush to kind of clean up a bit here. Just realize I had a lot playing on. Turn that off. Okay, with the move brush, just editing the contours of this horn a bit. And sometimes it's better to kind of detail or add some base editing before you insert a piece into your main area or character. Okay. Like how that's looking. It's good for now. Let's go ahead and position it from the profile view. Let's go ahead and use a little bit of the inflate brush. Kind of beef it up a bit there. And now with the rotate tool, I'm just going to rotate it a bit back. Scale it down much more. Much, much more. Turn XYZ back on. And just rotate this. And I'm just generally looking at the reference and figuring out how how these pieces should be just copying and pasted another pair of horns and now my goal is to just kind of insert them into the head so that they hopefully look a bit natural upon just embedding them I'm just trying to find a placement that works with the design Okay, I want them to kind of support the the big horn there, as well as fill out some of the space here. And just a little flatten brush. And now with the draw brush, I'm just going to build up a mound around the base of these horns, as you would have some flesh around the base of these these protruding little spikes here makes them look like they actually grew out and broke the skin and and just worked their way <laughs> through a skull I guess and I just went ahead and hid the piece so I can build up the back side of it as there is a little bit of room behind the spike all right like how that's shaping up little move brush continue to work around looking from many angles always continue to nudge and I notice the top's a bit 
flat here. We haven't done much up here. So with the draw brush, I'm just going ahead and using that with repeated strokes to kind of build up these mini spikes. And now I'm using the grab brush to kind of pull the spikes out a bit more. Just experimenting with some different ways you can actually draw out spikes as opposed to uh, shaping and intersecting spheres. Okay, and I'm just changing my angle and using that grab brush so I can pull these spikes out in different directions. A little smooth brush there. Kind of lower the intensity of some of these. And now I'm running over some of these with the flatten brush and that will give things the slight bony impression or at least look as if it is potentially a different material than his skin and as usual building up a slight mound of skin around the base also helps us with the distinction between one surface and the next so just continue to build that up all the way around I'm just being fairly loose with it right now I don't want to overdo these especially considering that they're in the back but I do want to give them enough to not look like they were actually glossed over so now with the crease brush just glossing in some wrinkles and also keep in mind I'm usually staying fairly zoomed out as to avoid detailing and to just keep a general outlook on how all the details and pieces are kind of working together okay so I'm out again so things are working okay like how that's shaping up and still with the crease brush I want to kind of go around especially at the top of the head here and just kind of use that to add some support and edges to kind of fill in some of these empty areas so I'm kind of freestyling now and if I don't like it I'll come back and undo or smooth or what have you and if you're really cautious and you don't want to ruin or play 50 undos just go ahead and save your file and then once that's saved you'll have the comfort knowing you can always load up the previous file before you went all crazy. So once again just playing with that crease brush. I'm playing between regular crease and holding alt to build up edges. Such a great dynamic duo. It's truly truly once again changed my sculpting workflow. I'm liking these edges here and I just wanted to, just enough information just to put something in this spot wasn't too concerned with what exactly all right I think we got just about enough information to kind of fill out the head here at least the back of the head. Alright. Just having a little fun here. Just dropping these shapes in here. I figure at some point in time these lines will lead to some type of interesting point and I guess that will be the back of the head here. With all these cluster of spikes. Alright, if I said it once, I'll say it again. Um, if you want to get more comfortable at sculpting, I suggest a drawing. Um, freehand drawing, just getting comfortable uh, with sketching, getting comfortable with your own hand will get you to the point where you could comfortably sketch in 3D. 
and experiment as I'm doing now because I totally making it up as I'm going right now and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't and that's that's the truth of the matter but it's the comfort comfort that needs to be established that drawing can give you even if you're not the best sketch artist just building up that comfort will allow you to move more freely okay let's go ahead and check out what we have here okay I'm happy with the progress I just want to work on a few areas that need a bit more attention such as the chin here he has a bit of a swirl pattern going there just to give it a little just a little attention just trying to get mine to look closer to the reference here just playing with the size of my crease brush and now a bit of flattened brush to do just that to the detail and just using that crease brush there on the lip as well and let's just fix that part of the lip next I'm activating the lazy feature on my brush that basically delays your strokes just a bit which enhances your ability to make smooth lines or smoother lines by hand here and it perfectly fits long smooth or long curve lines which is helping a bit here not my cup of tea the delay is a bit slow for me but give it a shot and in certain scenarios it can be very useful so mount and now it's time to give a bit of attention to the the beard of the bearded Oni here and once again with that crease brush I'm just kind of sketching in some breaks and some peaks some valleys some points and whatnot to the the beard and in a fair amount of way I am still kind of figuring out the direction to take the beard in at this point even though I have the, the reference it's always been my plan to kind of take this part in kind of a different direction so we'll be shifting the design more than a few times likely just trying to find that or translate it for that matter Okay, let's go ahead and push the chin in a bit here as I'm nudging around this hair geometry. There we go. Just push that back. And see how that's looking. All right. All right now I'm kind of hopping between the concept and the sculpt and how it's looking and what I find sometimes at this point is that if you are doing that and can't find a good middle ground I just go free for all I'll just figure it out and just try to keep the overall kind of essence of the concept so what I want is to add some interesting hair that doesn't get too interesting and take away from the rest of his face here. Okay. So I'm just trying to figure out mostly how many spikes and how they should look. So now I'm just using a flattened brush to kind of get these to look look a little bit better. Maybe that'll help me kind of figure out where to go with this. If I can uh, polish things up a little bit. And 
and just do some nudging with the mood brush a little pinching with the pinch brush there that's going somewhere I like the look of that looks much like the points I had in mind just use that pinch brush here and we're starting to get somewhere here so move sorry grab brush And I think I want to add another spike perhaps in between these two. Not entirely sure. Maybe these two are fine. Kind of like that. Let's tuck these in a bit. Play with the direction. Okay. Definitely have to fill up that bald spot one way or another, but. Just want to continue to navigate and find what direction we're taking this in. And I'm mostly spending my time focusing on the front because that's most of what's going to be seen or shown when we're all done here. It'll be the face. So that's my focus. And then I'll bring that energy to the rear of the sculpt here. I'm just using that grab brush to kind of pull out some spikes like we did earlier. And at that point it was placeholder. Now I'm sure I'm going to keep the spikes. So I'm just kind of figure out the spacing. All right. Figure to try alternative method using the draw brush. It's not bad couple repeated strokes so draw you out a spike as well and now with the crease brush I'm just going to kind of part these hair spikes making them look a bit more interesting and and just add to the interest of the volume in a lot of ways you can you really cover a lot of ground with the crease brush and visual interest and just getting your sculpts to look better just knowing when and where to kind of place a crease I think we got most of those kind of split up now I'm just using the grab brush and just fixing some of these spikes okay look how that's going let's go ahead and get close to just about wrapping up this clip here having given some love to the hair now Let's go ahead and hit this with a bit of an inflate brush just to build up the volume. And from there we can do anything such as use the flatten brush to flatten it. And sculpt things the way we kind of envision here. So using that grab bit of inflate made it really puffy some pinch brush forget about that little trick to bring your spike points to a fine point okay I'm just gonna hide the tusk for a moment just so I can play with this particular hair clump there bring it back and just tweaking the contours of the head. A little smooth brush. Working from different angles always. All right, let's see what we have here. Let's go ahead to the eyes. So man. And I think I'm going to go ahead and delete 
on the eyes. I was never intended to keep the eyes, just use them to shape the eyelids. And now I'm just using the draw brush, holding Alt to carve into the model. To get a nice cavity in there, the eye socket if you will. A little crease brush around the edges. So mount. Let's see what we got here. This concludes this clip. Do remember the key focuses. Lean hard on the grab brush. Draw brush is only one of many tools in your kit. Smooth will hide all sins. Be sure to work from various angles as well as with bite sized pieces for modeling. And give pressure sensitivity a try if you're working with a tablet. In the next clip, we'll focus on form and style. See you there. Form and style. Okay, the key focus of this clip will be masking as well as smooth. Diving right on in. Just getting things started here by unmasking the head. And the goal of this clip or this section is particular is to just round out the design of the sculpt and just kind of finalize some things design wise and touch up any areas that need any additional help. So it's just taking what we have for the most part and enhancing it, so to speak. So right now I'm just playing with the shape of his head, trying to really kind of amplify the shape, get something a little bit more interesting. And occasionally I'm looking back at the reference and seeing if there's anything visually appealing I want to pull out of that. Switch into the ears now. I'm going to go ahead and kind of scale those down a bit with the scale tool and now rotate a bit. And keep in mind where you click and drag with that rotate tool is where your, your pivot is going to be. Okay. And now to these tusks, I'm just going to reshape them a bit. I can do a good deal of this with the grab brush here. And my idea here is, is to kind of shape this to something that complements his ears and doesn't really kind of runs an angle that kind of interferes with it. So it kind of works out. They all they both get their own space to kind of visually kind of grasp them. Okay, now moving back to the head. Just go ahead and tweak my settings a bit. And just tweak the brow here with the grab brush. Something a little bit more menacing there with that. And just subtle nudges as usual. Okay, a little bit more work around the eyes. Then I should have to do a bit more work inside here now that that the eyeball is gone. I'm gonna put a bit more attention into the socket later on. But for now, we're just prepping things by kind of getting more of a round shape. All right, now I'm just using a bit of masking and I hit the big teeth there. And now with the grab brush, just nudging the nose, tweaking its shape and not worrying about the lips or teeth being affected. Just went ahead and inverted the mask and cleared it. And just continue to nudge. Alright. And you can 
truly spent a good deal of time doing this. And from the profile, let's plan out the shape of that nose. I just like drawing interesting noses. Or sculpting, I should say. Alright, just pulling back on these this cheek area here. And let's see what else we can work on from this view. Just curve these teeth a bit using that grab brush. Alright, looks good. Just make sure I have that tucked into his mouth. Let's go ahead and pull, pull on this lip here. Bit of masking just to pull up that bottom lip. And even from extreme angles, continue to nudge. A bit more masking here. Cross the lip. Just trying to come in here and maybe clean up the underside here of that mask. And now with the grab brush, just pulling out the chin a bit. Got a bit more volume. Clear that mask. And now we can make a crease with a small size brush there. Bit up smooth. Zoom out, see what we have. Okay. Let's go ahead and move back to the hair and beard. Now we're going to go back to kind of finalizing the overall look of the hair from the front view here. That's something I've been playing with for a while now. And this is the part of the course where we go ahead and definitely finalize that. Just work my way around it. Just angle that particular piece downwards and to the right a bit. I'm just going to go ahead and use the draw brush to kind of build up a bit of a spike here. And that's without the clay mode on. All right. And next I'm going to go ahead and just, just position them. Tweak the overall shape of a few of these strands here. Like so. And I'm just trying to find the best angle to manipulate these parts from. Like so. Always moving around. Checking how things look from different angles. Okay. And simply doing that will allow you to really tweak your models very fast and get the most out of sculpting. Okay, a little smooth brush there. And now we're starting to fill in the shape here. Kind of the profile, get a solid profile for that beard. A little flatten brush here. As you can see, it's populating polygons as we sculpt out with this smaller brush. All right. And now. 
just gonna go ahead and continue to nudge away. Back to the hair. And shortly we'll work our way towards the back of this of his hair here. Just a little pinch brush just to kind of pull that to a point. Great for making spikes. All right. We got to try and see what it looks like. If I made it longer. Mm. Nah. This is better. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and fix this gap here. Here. Just want to fill it in. And hit that with a smooth. Bit of flatten brush. And now uh, I gotta go ahead and kind of reshape this hair spike. I'm just gonna fill it in with a bit of the clay brush. Some smoothing. And nudging. Now the hair would have went smoother had I had a better idea how to translate it, but like I said, these things can take time even on the smallest of sections to get things to look uh, some kind of good but that is the fun of it and hopefully you're, you're enjoying it a little smooth here on that little goatee section I'm just playing with the shape of that hair. Mm. That's good for now. Back to the head. Just gonna use the more crease brush. And as we move towards the actual detail section, you'll see more and more crease brush getting used to carve in these these details it's definitely the the detail brush and I'm just holding alt to add that edge just to add a bit more interest along the lips there okay a little crease there I could also use the pinch brush to get that tight line that's kind of a happy accident a little fold there underneath the lip you just roll with it add a few more wrinkles why not and maybe a little crease on the back side inside of the mouth who knows maybe we'll take an image from this very extreme angle and then we'll be glad we carved in in the underside of his mouth all right let's get in on the nose here I'm just reshaping this so nostril curl curl here bit of flatten brush like I said, this is the part in the course or of the project where we're finalizing it and just enhancing some areas that could use it, especially areas that you're gonna the viewer are definitely gonna focus on. And typically that would be the eyes slash face area and then outward. So it's kind of the idea for this guy here. It's a lot of detail around his eyes and brow. And we'll definitely be accentuating that. 
as we make our way towards the details here. All right now I'm just doing a bit of cleanup here. And underside here. Let's go ahead and clean up a bit of this. All right. Some good. Look around, let's hop over, zoom out before we get too detail-y. I'm just selecting all the teeth now and hitting them with a bit of smooth. Thought they were a bit too square. All right, and hit them with a bit of inflate just to get that volume back. And so I was gonna go ahead and make them look a bit sharp and run over each tooth with the flattened brush. Much like we did with the horns. Okay. And if you really want it, once all is done, you could turn off symmetry on the model and go over one side if you're really particular about some asymmetry. Okay. Occasionally hiding a piece so I can get access to size of another piece. I'm gonna undo that. And I was trying from this angle, but I don't think it's just going to happen without some kind of masking or hiding. So, let's hide that. And that's good. I like that much better. Okay. A little bit more work here. All right. Zoom out. Let's do a similar effect to these, these large teeth. And what I'm doing here, I'm just using the Alt and Reduce brush just to kind of pre-poly this. There's no real reason for doing it. It does slightly increase your performance because it's not populating triangles and sculpting at the same time, but it's not really necessary. Alright, and I'm being really loose with this. I just want to add a bit of visual texture to the surface there and not look uh, too soft. I want to say. And just loosely running from running down the length of the tusk here. It's giving us this effect. I'm not even changing my brush size, so if you was to change your brush size, this might even get more dynamic. Or even if you turned on your pressure sensitivity to your tablet and enabled it on the size of your brush, this might give some interesting effects. Okay, I'm just trying to find a right angle to kind of flatten from this view and tweak the shape with the grab brush. All right. A little more nudging. And just like that, our boring tusk has a bit more texture. Okay, let's hop back to the head. A few more tweaks. Just pulling, pulling some things out here. Notice we can do a little bit more work on these horns here. Just getting them into position. I felt they were a bit too high. I feel this position gives them a bit more character. 
Let's see, I'm just gonna curl them a bit. Makes them look much more interesting from the profile view. And it's barely noticeable from the front, so it's kind of a win-win. Okay. And once again, just using that flatten brush to give some texture to that surface. Okay. Nice and flat light. Good. All right. Let's go ahead and pull this up a bit. Zoom out. And just continue to make sure we're happy with this. Let's go ahead and build up a bit of skin around the base of this this part of his spike or horn so I'm just making stroke after stroke just loosely stroking in some some would be flesh and I bumped up my strength a little bit to do this a bit faster Lower the strength much more. And now I'm using a draw brush without the clay stroke. Giving you more of a rounder, rounder stroke. Which is sort of working, not really. If I flatten it, it looks much better. Or smoother, I should say. And now with the trusty crease brush. Give us some wrinkles and just continue to add just as many creases needed for this to read from a moderate distance and fill in any empty spots here with a little, little creasage as well. I think that should do it. Zoom out. All right, that does conclude this clip. Do remember the key focuses. Masking is very powerful, so use it. And smoothing is everywhere you want to be. In the next clip, we'll cover details. See you there. Details. Okay, the key focus of this clip will be the smooth, reduced brush, crease, pinch, detail, and pin pressure. I'll start things off here by grabbing the reduce brush and things tend to get a bit crashy the closer I get to a million triangles. You can see in the corner your triangle count. So I'm just gonna go ahead and look around the model for places I can reduce in detail. And we actually don't have too many. I'm just glossing the brush over a few areas where I see a high concentration in in white from the from the wireframe and you want to be very careful with this if you spent some time detailing an area waving this reduced brush over that area will reduce that detail and if you want to get it back you of course have to undo or re-sculpt it back in so be careful with that. Okay, so now we reduced a bit. Let's go ahead and begin to detail a few areas here. Now with my crease brush, the detailing brush, I'm just gonna turn on pin pressure for the strength, which means the harder I press on my pen tablet, the deeper my creases will be. So, just giving that a whirl. It's really useful for a delicate and or organic detailing like this. So, but for the most part, I do mostly prefer sculpting without pressure, at least in sculptures. 
but give it a try it it might be it might work a little bit better for you okay and I'm just kind of ghosting in some idea of detail I'm not trying to necessarily follow human anatomy I'm just wafting in some shapes and now I'm just using the draw brush just to fill in these shapes and add a bit of texture as well as form and I'm also going over them with a bit of smoothing to smooth out some of the harsher harsher lines we're sculpting in there all right and a little flatten brush occasionally I'll use the flatten brush to to almost remove detail or stylize the area and that's definitely something that I'll be using throughout the polishing of this model here I'm gonna come to these horns here top of his head I'm gonna use a crease brush to add a bit of surface texture I'm gonna add a bit of wear and age with some kind of hairline kind of erosions or uh, you say scratches even or kind of a bone texture this might be more of a cartoon bone thing oh actually just crashed there and we are back definitely expect to see crashes happen more often in the detailing stage especially if you have anywhere near a million triangles but it could be my computer it's hard to say what's uh, universal in experience so once again with the crease brush I have the pressure sensitivity on the strength and it does feel extra nice when using the crease brush so I do recommend giving that a shot okay now zoomed out with the flatten brush I'm just kinda flattening some of these details almost smoothing it but in a polished kinda way so I'm reducing some of the strength and area just to have that control okay I'm gonna do something very similar for these tusks here I'm just gonna carve in that that pitting those creases adding more interest and and volume or change in volume and it's these little details that give each part a bit more interest all right there I just used a bit of pinch brush just to tighten that that crease it's another way to tighten up areas and the thing is I want to keep these details balanced playing a playing a game between under and over or a game between not over detailing and not under detailing that's what I want to say and you just keep your eye out on it and if you do you can always uh, use the flatten brush to kind of polish out any any area you want okay I'll hide that again so useful it truly changed the way I work in sculptures when I found out about that hide button okay just adding up a little bit more to the tusk here now if you're using the alt and crease brush to kind of create some raised edges it all reads very similar at a distance I 
All right, let's kind of add a bit more of that from the rear as well. Trying to keep this somewhat balanced out. I don't want to turn around to the back and realize there's nothing detailed back here. So try to take care of it while we're working on the bone here. Even from uh, underneath angle like this. Okay. And lastly, let's do a little bit of that to the teeth here. Not too much. I don't want it to become kind of like a pattern going around. These are different kind of, uh, I guess, bones. So I want them to not look too similar. But. Just a little extra surface detail doesn't hurt. All right. A little bit more flatten brush. And a little bit from this angle. And some out. All right, let's go ahead and clear the mass and take a look at what we've got thus far and take a look at my reference and just figure out where to go next let's go to the head and we're going to work up here just going to turn off that pressure sensitivity and with the grab brush continue to make a few more nudgings here and there and go back to carving out the recess for this eye socket here. Let's continue to carve out the eye socket more and more to help just make it look like it's actually a recess here behind the eyeball. And just bring the eyeball back. Okay. I think we can carve out just a bit more down here where a tear duct would be. And a little bit up here as well. Let's see how it looks from up here. And I think, let's see, the crease brush. Just carve in along the edges. Just play with my brush settings as well. And just get that to look more like an eyelid there. Constant nudgery. More crease brush. Occasionally changing the size just to kind of control how tight of a crease I'll get. It's probably more tied to strength than your size but it has an effect and now I'm just kind of adding some sharper creases around here decent balance between these and soft creases make things look uh, extra nice I'm just using the grab brush to kind of kind of taper the eyelid a bit here as well as some pinch brush it's dead in the center of the head this eyeball so I want to definitely give it the amount of time needed to get it to look look a certain way okay Just about there. A little flatten brush around the edge. Okay. 
And I figure we'll just go ahead and do a little detailing on the eye itself. Just a quick pass of detail. And one reason I'm keeping this quick is I don't want to, as I say often, over detail. Uh, the key focus of this, this particular piece would be the forehead and the eye area. And while I want detail throughout the sculpt, I don't want it to take too much attention from the focus area. So that's one way to help you kind of balance your detail is to make sure you prioritize it and space it out. But that's all according to style, so it's all up to you. All right. The eye done. I'm going to come into the forehead here with the flatten brush. And I'm going to come in and just really just flatten the tops of the swirls. Well, my original idea was that this would kind of have a hard edge look. While organic in design, it would have some creases, some hard creases making it look almost manufactured. So just doing that with this flattened brush all the way around. Just decided to unmask the head. Okay. Now we've done that. Just gonna take the grab brush and just kind of tweak the shapes of some of these before we get to editing them further. All right, so just make a few test strokes here. Shrink my brush down. Oops, undo that. And what I'm doing now is holding the Alt key while dragging the inflate brush across the edges. And it does this really cool trick where it will enhance your, oops, we actually crash. All right, we're back. All right, so let's zoom in again. So once again, the inflate brush, holding down the Alt key, you run it across your sculpt, and what it will do is enhance your sculpt. It'll just push and pull back uh, geometry based off what's already there. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's easier to demo. So you see as I stroke over these areas, it's amplifying the current details. It's making the edges sharper or pushing them out further and it's making your creases more shallow. So it's a good way to kind of amplify any areas that you want to make bolder. And this is another great reason I enjoy making these courses is because this is something I just discovered uh, working on this course. So it's always good to practice. Okay, so this is best done from a decent distance to really get a good read on what we're enhancing. We don't want everything on the same level of boldness. We want a, want a variety. So I'm going to play it a bit loose with this brush or technique as well. Might have to go back and flatten some of that. Now with the crease brush holding the Alt key, I'm creating a raised edge around the swirls. Just trying to get that hard edge, edge. So very slowly, just running this around the swirls, like so. And just taking my time so I can get this to look the way I know we can here in sculptures. 
a little nudging with the grab brush. Try to get that a nice, nice round shape. And then back to my, my edging. And you can see already we're getting some really tight, tight edges. Holding that alt key down. Okay. I'm kind of looking at this. I'm just going to zoom in a bit more. So I can make that look a little bit more swirl like. Okay. And I would really take this to town in this manner. I do enjoy detailing like. I have most sculptors, but as I said before, very much to keep in mind your poly count in a sculptress. I'm sure it's the reason I do crash when I do. It's because it can only handle so much. But what it can handle is definitely enough to get your skills up and have some fun and create some awesome projects. And I'm just loosely dragging it around. Do it for the other side. Now with the regular crease brush, I'm just gonna ghost over this edge just to clean it up a bit. A smaller brush, do the same thing from in here. And move on to another swirl. Let's just go ahead and turn attention back to this last whirl here. And do the same thing. Like so. And as I said, that's pretty much the the key tools in getting things to look hard surface in sculptures is the raised edge and the crease brush. Pretty much it's all the crease brush and pinch brush as well. If you wanted to tighten your raised edges or your creases, you'd run that pinch brush over them and you get them extra tight and even clean them up by you know smoothing them out some. So now in the eye area, very fun place to detail. As long as you don't go too crazy, you can almost get away with any type of wrinkles around eyes of male characters. So back with the flatten brush, back to the crease brush. Just swirl all the way around. Okay. And now back to that flatten brush to establish those crispy flat tops I so desperately need. All the way around. Like so. And I'll look down at my triangles. I am without doubt over a million. And it's not that you can't go over it. It's just you enter a higher risk of crashing. In my, in my personal projects. It's usually the threshold. So what I do recommend is often saving. Once you get close to around that number as well as cleaning up and reducing polygons in areas that you don't need all the detail. So here in the brow, kind of rinse and repeat in the old 
edging technique. Let's continue to wrap up that section and just slowly work our way down this furrow down our way into the nose and I'm just gonna simply restroke what's already here with the crease brush just making things look a bit more pronounced and just overall just confirming or obliterating anything that doesn't help the sculpt at this point. So I'm trying to just add a bit more detail in here like his nose is in the concept. It's a lot of a lot of interest going on here so we get some of that as well. And also paying attention to the shapes that my sculpt lines are making here. Just trying to keep everything flowing. And that could be up to you to consider that technique or or style. Just a little smoothing. Working our way into the eye area now. We don't get too far from that crease brush. That's the detailing stage. And my only goal here is just to create some interesting wrinkles slash creases here. And I'm just kind of whipping them in. Uh, changing my direction, but still uh, going along the the curve of the eyelid there, and I'm just working around, trying to make sure we don't leave any area without any work at all, if not detail, but just a little bit of work even in these eye sockets here now that the eyeball is gone be a good idea to put a little work into there even at these odd angles like this never know that might be a amazing angle once you're done only to realize that you didn't detail or even add any work to an area. I've I've been there. It happens, and it's only as simple as going back and putting the work into it. But just doing it now saves you that trouble. So as I said, just adding a little something in here. And whatever details I add, my only rule is to follow some type of flow. And if necessary, have some means of kind of mixing what's already around. Okay. Some more creases in this eye and it's already adding it's a bit more interest now his eye no longer looks like I just forgot to add eyeballs it looks like I intended on him not having eyes and that's what you want Okay. Try not to get too carried away. Keep our eye on that uh that detail polygon count. A 
little bit here. Here as well. And just keep noodling away. These eye sockets here, as time zoomed out, do a bit more creasing from here. Nudging with that grab brush. And just checking it from various angles, just making sure I'm happy with it. I want to add a bit of detail. Let's undo that. Let's turn on the clay stroke for my draw brush. Draw a little mound of clay there. And now with my crease brush, I'm just going to run along that and just kind of figure out what direction I'm going in here. So I actually send that that way and send this one that way. And this is a detail I'm pulling from the reference. I wanted to want to get in there and see if it works. So far I like it. The changing of shapes does add um to the to the read. It definitely helps if you can kind of get it to tie in. Okay, and now with the crease brush, I'm kind of running an edge around it, and this is helping to push that stylization a bit more. Constantly changing my strength, just trying to find that sweet spot. And I'm doing whatever this is, just adding some some little detail, little slash marks. Just creasing up that portion of the lip here with some use of the pinch brush as well. I do enjoy using a pinch brush. I don't use it a lot though, but it's super handy when when I do use it. Alright. And I wanna kinda work on this a bit. Just using a flattened brush to kinda kinda soften and make those details vanish. Some grab brush to build up that cheek and back to crease brush just looking for areas I could add an edge to all for stylized purposes and let's try one here why not Alright, and these are the only things you can truly see zoomed in. Not so much from this distance. But it's good to have some things that you can appreciate at a distance as well as at a moderate to close distance. Kind of a multi-read thing going on for your scope. It's kind of a little bit for everybody. And just a bit of a crease here. And let's see what next. Let's work on the back side of the cheeks here. Back with the crease brush, just extending these lines back here. And a little smooth brush as well. And like so, using a bit of flattened brush to just get an interesting edge here. All right, good time to see what we have. All right, just 
gonna go over that edge there as well just work our way around that slip okay just seeing what else could use a bit more a bit more work just run a flatten brush over this part here let's see so mount do a bit more grab and pushing and even though we're detailing doing light grabs and pushing won't hurt your details too much okay I think that's really shaping up. Just change my setting. Zoom in a bit more. And just work the inside of that nose there. And just clean up the shapes all up in there. And this is what we have so far. Well, that does conclude this clip. Do remember some of the key focuses covered. The reduced brush will help you manage your polygon count, and the pinch brush is great for cleaning up edges. In the next clip, we will cover beard, hair, and conclude the course. See you there. Beard, hair, and end. Alright, the key focus in this clip will be the crease, flatten, and grab brush, as well as working for various angles. So as the title suggests, we're going to be working on the beard here as we wrap up the course. And the goal is to pretty much finalize the beard hair. And one way I'm doing that is by adding a bit of surface texture and kind of being solid with the shape here with the use of the flatten brush to kind of establish some form and style. Something we should have probably done before now but has a, enough detail to carry it. I'm still making those tweaks and nudges all the way to the end. Coming in with the crease brush. Just helping to separate areas. Get a little work to this hair on his chin as well. Make sure I'm happy with that. As these will be the final touches. Just trying a little a bit of extra surface texture there as well and my focus is definitely on the front I want it to look as good as possible and then I'll go ahead and put a bit more work to the rest of the hair just changing the ear shape here that grab brush And now I'm just going to play with the, the overall shape of this receding hairline here. And just using the crease brush to turn that into, I guess, a hair clump spike. And the grab brush just to shape it bit more of that flatten brush and just tweaking the shape all right zoom out I like the look of that let's go ahead and do a little bit more of that for the rest of the hair here Making sure to 
check my overall shapes even the shapes within my shapes such as these hair clumps and more of that flatten brush once again I had this idea of uh, it has kind of a hairstyle similar to anime hair some of the spiky styles you'll see so it's kind of the inspiration for this and I'm just trying to pull these creases down somewhere alright just complete this edge here nudge could also come in with some pinch brush to tighten these edges if you want it. Okay. And partially also just cleaning up as well. Just clean up all the way around. more flatten brush nothing too fancy here but like I said before it's just a matter of time before we make our way to putting some notable attention to the back of the head But if this was a, say, a character for a game, in third person, you might want to definitely focus on how the back would look. All right, a little smooth, a little flatten brush, crease. Use whatever gets the job done. All right. And if I had said it before, a lot of the sculpting programs available use the same tools you have here in Sculptress. The flatten brush, the grab brush, draw brush all of them are basic and that's why I am certain you know understanding of how to sculpt here in Sculptress will definitely uh, transfer over to any other sculpting app I'm just messing around with the lip here Playing with this overall shape and volume. And just carving in a little extra something here. A little extra crease. Alright, so last few edits before we demo turning off symmetry here. Now you want to save before doing any of this. You also is a good idea to reduce your poly count and you could do that by hitting the reduce selected button here so after saving and reducing your poly count click the symmetry button to turn off symmetry and if all goes well you'll see that white line going down the center of your model vanish and now you can unmask uh, parts or halves of your model without selecting the other half because symmetry is off now and I just rotated his ear and now one of his large teeth here which doesn't make much sense shouldn't be able to rotate your teeth but just for demonstration purposes it's just that easy to move intersecting parts of your model for everything else you just use 
say a grab brush to do something like raising a eyebrow or something like that or a part of his nose that's my 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 idea to keep any of this is just to show how you would go about that okay so once you've done whatever you have with your model whether you posed it or not next thing you want to do is save again just hit the save button find a place you like to save put in a name I'm going to put bearded Oni and you just go ahead and click save and that will save that wherever you choose and next you're going to want to save out some images of what you created you can go up here and choose a different material if you like i'm going to keep the one we have material eight and just find that nice angle i like to capture an image from click options and then click save image tell sculptures where you like to save it on your computer simply give it a name Call this new front image and just click save and then you'll see this rendering bar and it's been saved to where you told it and just that simple and then you go ahead and find a couple of other angles and pretty much just rinse and repeat the same process as we come to a conclusion of the course I want to congratulate you on your completion and hope that you were able to get some helpful information. Stay connected on YouTube and or social media to see upcoming projects. Till next time, happy sculpting.